Everyone has their own definition of the word identity. Some may say the word means your reputation, the way that others see it. To me, identity means how you see yourself, how you identify yourself, whether that be a gender, sexuality, or as simple as your personality. A huge role in how you see yourself is what you have had as a first-hand experience. You could go through this life-changing event or have a short conversation that sticks in your mind forever. This stays with you, therefore impacting the way you think and the decisions you make. To myself, I feel like I'm a very caring and kind person, but overall very quiet. Who I am today was all influenced by my past. But one specific event changed me more than others. When I was eight years old, my father, Ernesto de los Santos, passed away. At the time, I was so young, I barely knew how to function like a normal human being, let alone deal with all these emotions. I was a happy, extroverted ball of sunshine, but suddenly this huge event changed everything about my life and myself. Since I'm the youngest of seven kids, I didn't know my father too well. I had the least amount of time to be with him, which made everything worse. It didn't hit me until I was in the middle of being 10. I had matured enough and had the time to actually take in how, life my, uh, how different my life had been and would be without my father. He wouldn't be there to hug me or rub my stomach when it was hurting or hug me when it needed comforting. I wouldn't have him to talk about my relationship problems, look over at him during graduation, or have him walk me down the aisle at my own wedding. He wouldn't even be there to meet his grandchildren. All of these beautiful visions I had for the future would be missing a huge part, my father being there. <coughs> that was the time of my life that I completely broke down. My whole personality flipped and I became a new person. I was introverted, lazy, pessimistic, and all around not healthy. I lived my life scared of being hurt. I became sad and easily offended. Of course, I still had my bubbly side, but I would randomly snap at my friends if they did just a small thing that annoyed me. I was also fragile. I was very scared of confrontation. There's a specific memory that I still see in my mind so vividly. Um, I was talking to my elementary school teacher, Mrs. Buzma. She had come to talk to me about my request to quit Earth Club. Our conversation lasted a few seconds of her asking me why I wanted to quit and a few minutes of me crying. She felt so bad she made me cry, but really it wasn't her fault at all. I was just in a state of mind that made me think everyone hated me and I was somehow giving them a reason to do so. At that moment, it felt like the end of the world. Now it just seems silly. Ages 10 and 11 were the time of grief, anger, and regret. I changed in the next year of my life, but not vividly, or not drastically. <laughs> Age 12 was a time of reflection. I focused on my own feelings, but kept everything to myself. I became closed off and shy. This is also the time where I realized how different my life was from other people's. I didn't know what other people would be going through, so I constantly convinced myself that being mean to someone, even jokingly, would be taking it too far. I hated the way I felt, and the thought of other people having these same emotions made me feel sick. No one should ever have to feel, deal with the things I did, and still, there are many people who have been through way worse. So I wanted to make sure no one felt as hopeless as I did. I wanted to make people laugh or smile, anything that made them happy. This is where I think I got my caring trait from. I want to take care of everyone else before myself, and making other people happy made me feel better. It let me know that I was making a difference, even if it was just as small as a smile. But doing anything to make a person happy means that I forced myself to always say yes. It didn't matter whether I was having a bad day or struggling with anything at all. I didn't want to let my friends down. I didn't want to have them stare at me like I should ruin their life. I used to feel so guilty for just the small things I did that shifted other people's moods, so I gave in to them. And still, I'm working on saying no. I don't want to make myself sound like this terrible, depressed person that hated her friends in her life, because I'm not and never was. Sure, I had my moments where I wished I would just disappear. I still did today. But this part of me never came to the surface. I was scared that people would use my insecurities and vulnerability against me, which is why I choose to stay quiet, hidden in the background. If I were to describe working through my emotions, it would be close to this. Imagine swinging on a rope to get from one platform to the other. You're confident that you can make it to the other side and go. You grip the rope and lift up your legs, only to swing halfway there. Now, you're stuck in the middle trying to find your way. You try to push your body in one direction, but no matter how far you soar, it's never far enough to get your feet to the platform. This is how I was. I'd, find sw I'd swing close to finding my way, only to get lost again. I felt like every single thing I did would later turn around and make life miserable for me. I was constantly trying to, f to find my balance between my emotions. I was lost in myself, desperate to feel sane again. Now if you ask anyone in my class or my teachers to describe me, they'd most likely say I'm very shy or quiet, and it's true. I'm always the one person in class that never raises their hand to answer or ask a question. Fortunately, most of the teachers I've had understand this. 
they realize that I'm not comfortable being the center of attention. I've had people in my life that think it's stupid that I get this nervous. As you can see so far, I've been tripping over my words and my body has been shaking. My breathing isn't very steady either. I'm not used to having all eyes for me except for when I'm singing. Even then, my shaking isn't very controlled. So for the people in this room that have never met me or my family, you probably should know that we all love music. When my dad died, I didn't have anything there to help me other than my family. But when I got a phone, music became my escape. I once read that music has drug-like effects. It calms nerves and changes your brain chemistry. Music was a huge help for me through my grieving process. I'd find songs that I relate to or songs I could live through. Since then, I've always had music to, I've always trusted music to have my back. Having this love for singing made me come out of my shell a little bit. I participated in show choir activities and auditioned for solos, even getting some of them. I met new friends from choir or just from being, or bonding over our favorite bands. I also had a great opportunity to perform a song on my intermediate school's morning announcements. I remember we had an assignment to do where we read a book and had to bring in a memento that our character would have. I read the book Blackbird Fly by Erin Chaudakilly. This book had a main character named Apple, who was a Filipino girl living with her mother in America. She had recently moved there after her father's death. She was addicted to the Beatles and had a great love for music and playing guitar. But I thought it was crazy how I had found a book that had a main character who was so much like me. I brought in my ukuleles, and so a lot, since it was a lot easier to carry with me than a guitar, of course. My teacher, Mrs. Lee, asked if I could play a song in front of the class, and without thinking it through, I said yes. I sang the song House of Gold by 21 Pilots, and apparently I was talented enough to play for the whole school. Even though it was just a video recording, the thought of everyone staring at me made me feel dizzy. My teacher knew how reserved I was, and was incredibly impressed that I had this hidden voice that was so strong. When the day came that everyone saw it, I got a ridiculous amount of support and compliments, each one slowly building me up. At this point in my life, I was getting better at being myself. Now, jump to age 13. This is when I'm in seventh grade and I have to start doing things by myself. I can't drag the people I trust through my whole life. At some point, I need to get over my fears of getting hurt in social situations, public speaking and hurting people's feelings. I need to mature and be confident with who I am. When I need that push of inspiration, I think of my dad. He was such a strong, caring, and brave person. All I've wanted in my life is to make him proud, and I've realized that these things holding me back keeps me from doing that. So I've been working on saying no more often. I've been participating in volleyball and summer school. I've been taking chances to public speak about what I'm passionate about, and that's part of why I'm here today. I wanted a chance to talk about what I want to talk about and be myself. But the weird thing is, I think I like being the way that I am. Somehow, I, f I know most of you guys won't understand this, but it's like somehow I find this part of me fascinating. My whole life has been changed by this event and I still want to cling to it. I find comfort and nostalgia and think change is scary. But that shouldn't impact my life so much. Though this may be my identity, I don't want to feel like this my whole life. So today, I stand here before you as a 14-year-old girl, still in seventh grade, evolving into the person I hope to be. I am kind, funny, smart. I am talented and I am beautiful. I am scared, shy, introverted, I'm sensitive and I'm vulnerable. I don't want anyone to be ashamed of their feelings. I went through this phase and at the moment I'm trying to work my way out of it. I'm sure that talking about it would be a huge help. So when someone asks you if you're okay, don't just say good because you don't think they'll care. If they really do care about you, they shouldn't just expect a one word answer. And the same goes for when you ask someone else. Listen to them and support them if you think they need it. Because it's so hard to explain what you're going through when you don't think the other person will understand. But after talking about it, it feels like a huge weight has been lifted off your body and you can breathe clearer. You won't regret it, because I know I don't. This event in my past changed me, but I can't let it hold me back. And to everyone listening, you may go through a huge event that changes you as well. Whether it be good or bad, easy or challenging, it will have some sort of impact on you. But you shouldn't let that hold you back from being yourself. Take it, learn from it, change from it, and then live your life as the person who you come to be or work towards who you want to be. Because what you go through in the past makes you stronger. It makes you, you.